Let's talk about the mission of Bola Tinubu to uh, Chief Olusha Gombash in just house. And I'm Jean joined by a chieftain of the APC, a former Minister of Aviation, Chief Femi Fanikade. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Good evening. Thank you very much. For having because uh, before we get into yes. why Balatinobu went mm. into Chief Obasanjo, who is your former principal, yes. um, I'd like you to react, uh, to give you an opportunity as a member of the APC to react to what Chief George said on your candidate and your right. party. Well, first of all, it's very clear that um, Chief Body George has some kind of personal axe to grind with um, Ashiwaju Polatinumbu. And um, it, it really is, for me, tragic to see an elder statesman and a born, somebody I have immense respect for, uh, to stand on TV or sit on television and begin to use words like clown and uh, this, that, and the other against uh, a man that uh, has been a contemporary of his over the years. They may have had political differences, but to bring such personal animosity and angst into a political arena is something that gives me deep concern. I think he's obsessed. I think that he's virtually delusional. I think that his hatred for Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu has beclouded his judgment. And I think, frankly speaking, um, you know, there's nothing that Ashiwaju can ever do to appease or please people like Chief Body George. He's made up his mind that Ashiwaju is a demon. He's made up his mind that he will never support him. He's made up his mind that he will demonize him for the rest of his life. And that's okay, because it really doesn't matter to us. The most important thing for us is this, what the people think and what the electorate thinks and what they will do, not what Chief Bode George in his delusions and his obsessions uh, 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 you know, manifest in terms of his wording. But what about some of the issues that he has raised, the questions that he has asked tonight? Like what? What are the answers to them? Like, well, he asked questions like what? He said that the, the elections were rigged. He said that ever since 1999, Bola Tinumbu's elections and, AP, and the elections that parties belonging or which Bola Tinumbu led were rigged in Lagos State. So rigged in 1999, rigged in 2003, rigged in 2007, rigged in 2011, rigged in, in, in 2015, rigged in 2019. And he's saying because there's a new electoral act, this time round, Lagos State will go PDP. The truth of the matter, and everybody knows, is that Lagos State will never go PDP. PDP itself imploded in Lagos State many, many years ago, never to be resurrected, as dead as a dodo. They will never resurrect. And no matter what he says, the answer lies in going to the field. Tinubu has defeated them every single election in Lagos State fairly and squarely, gone through all the due process, all the courts and so on and so forth, and continuously comes out on top, not just in Lagos, but in many other states in the Southwest. And that is something that you should give him credit for, even if you don't like his face. So I find it difficult uh, to sit here and listen to some of the things that this man has said. It's unfortunate. I think we should take our personal obsessions out of this. Let's stick to the issues. Let's be reasonable and rational and not come here and make absurd claims. He raised some issues yes. and he was asking questions. Yes. As a stakeholder, he's from Lagos State, yes. he's, a, he's a citizen of Lagos right. and he's asking, Alpha Beta, yes. a tax collecting yes. agent right. in Lagos, right. who owns it, he's asked that question. Yes. And he's also raised question over the debt burden of Lagos State. He's asking questions and he wants answers. Listen, he's perfectly entitled to raise questions and ask questions, but he appears to already know the answers. Why doesn't he venture the answers to us? These questions have been asked over and over again. As far as I'm concerned, it's inconsequential. What are the it's answers? Absurd. No, that? ask him to provide the answers. He's the one that raised no, the question. No, you should be able he, to no, get no, no, the no, answers No, 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 I didn't come here Chief, to come and talk about You're talking Alpha about Peter. because these are the issues no, 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 no. that have been raised no, no, no. about let, your candidate. Let's you should be, be able let, to speak let, about let, it. Let's be very, very clear. I can tell you this for free. And really, it's a pity that I have to say this to you. I can tell you this for free. There is absolutely no... Uh, 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 issue of corruption or, or, or any issue of, you know, uh, malfeasance on the part of Bola Tinubu when it comes to Alpha Beta or when it comes to anything else. These things have been said over the years. Nothing has been proved. EFCC has not gone after him. ICPC has not gone after him. He has not been indicted by even the Obasanjo government or after the Obasanjo government when APC came in. All these years, same questions being asked. He knows the answers. Instead of asking questions, let him tell us what the answers are, then we'll take it from there, or what he believes the answers are, let him take it from there. It is wrong to continue to impugn the character of somebody that has done so well for his people in this nation and continues to rise. We're not talking about Bola Tinubu or Lagos State alone anymore. This man has emerged as the presidential candidate of the largest party in this country, backed by many governors in this country, millions of people in this country who see their hope and aspirations in him. 
him as a leader of the party, as our presidential candidate. And that alone should be respected, instead of continuously going on about Alpha Beta, who owns Alpha Beta, who did this, what. The world does not begin and end in Lagos State. Lagos has done very well. Only a fool would say Lagos has not flourished since 1999, what it was then and what it is today. It has gone from strength to strength, and I'm very proud of the fact that I lived in Lagos for many years of my life. Look at Lagos today compared to yesterday. It's done exceptionally well. That is a given. So I think that we should focus on the whole country and raise issues that are pertinent to an election, not on who owns Alpha Beta. If he has the answer, let him provide it, then we'll take it from there. I know that the, uh, the campaign period will give room for sure. uh, more debate over this. Uh, I think it's, it was just um, okay for me to allow you to respond no, to some no, of but, these but, but, issues. There'll yes. be a lot of room, but l let's begin with some of the mm. conversations that are prepared for, uh, for you, mm. or with you. Uh, one being that, uh, as Femi Fanikaiode, yes. someone who spoke bitterly sometimes, mm. and who spoke so um, uh, hard or about Bola Tinubu mm. as a person mm. and against the APC. Mm. How do you feel right now, morally speaking, speaking for the APC and Bola Tinubu? Nothing to do with morals. It's a question of choices. It's my choice. And my choice is that when I was in the PDP, and I was in the PDP for a number of years, I fought against those that were against my party. Now I'm no longer in the PDP, I'm in the APC. I will fight against those that are against my party. That is my nature. And I make these choices based on conviction and based on courage. It was very clear to me what was going to happen in the PDP. You ask me why, how come I've changed? It was very clear to me what was going to happen in the PDP. Look at their situation today. He was talking about a party that has been de uh, de uh, bedeviled, that a devil has entered the party. I saw that devil met, you know, two years ago, coming in, slipping in, creeping into their ranks, and I knew this was going to happen to them. They have imploded a situation whereby he's now in a party, or they are a party, which has violated its own party constitution by insisting on providing a northern presidential candidate. Secondly, a party that, despite the fact that it has a northern presidential candidate and a key leading figure in the South, would have won it, but they messed him up with the, uh, the party convention shamelessly, ensured a northern candidate came in and basically cheated him out of, out of that opportunity, and then they now have the effrontery to say the, the, the chairmanship, the national chairmanship of the party should remain in the north. What type of party is that? It's a sectional party, a presidential candidate from the north, a national chairman from the north, a board of, treaty, of trustees chairman from the north, and the two appointments they've made so far for uh, their presidential campaign, uh, their two spokesmen are all from the north. It's a sectional party, so I sympathize. But these are some of the arguments you've made against the APC. What? You're someone who has so, I mean, your good. party, you've spoken I'm glad, about religious I'm, I'm glad you, issues. Let me, let me, let me, let me, I'll take that in a minute. But let me, you, in fact, you have said at let some me, point let that me, let there me, was a demon and devil in the no, APC. No, 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 no. Let me, let me take before. this step by step. And I'll explain this to you. The fact of the matter is this, okay? Today, let's talk about today, not yesterday. PD, APC has reformed itself and has become a different body. This APC, so the talk, devil let left me the APC? tell you. The, well, the you devil you saw. No, 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 no. But definitely it's been exercised, and I'll tell you why. And it's proved. I'm not just saying it. At the convention that we had, it was the APC Northern Governors that insisted that the party, the, 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 sorry, the presidential ticket should go down south. They insisted on a power shift, a situation whereby even some of us were supporting northern candidates because PDP had come up with the northern. They said, no, we will give power to the south, we will let it shift in the name of equity and decency on all that is good. That is a party that is reformed, that has a new mindset, that, 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 is in, that has decided that it wants national unity, unity and cohesion and puts it before northern interests. PDP has done the opposite. So if you're talking about demon of the past in APC, and there were demons in the past in the APC, those demons left long ago. The party that's played with the demon today is the PDP, and I'll tell you why. Like I said, all those things I just said, couple it with, with this as well. Even at the very height of their effrontery, that they have cheated, Wike cheated all the Southerners in the party, even at that height, they are still saying that nothing will change, party chairman will not step down, and so on and so forth. What will they do when they come to power, if they come to power in this country? So I think that he's absolutely right. I agree with Chief Body George. A demon, a devil, has entered the PDP. But where I disagree with him is this. That demon and that devil will never leave the PDP. It will not leave the PDP. It's in the grip of the power of the powers of darkness. And I'm assuring you of this, that by the time we go to a campaign and election, we will expose them even right. further. Now, it isn't ironic what you see seen as an aberration. Uh, the issue of religion in politics is what is playing out in the party that you support now. Well, How do you defend first that? of all, I wouldn't say, when you say aberration, this is a very weighty word. Listen, 
the, 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 the most important thing, the greatest danger to national unity and cohesion, as far as I'm concerned, and we've been saying this over the years, is a situation whereby power does not shift to the south after eight years of a Hausa Fulani man ruling this country. It was a given. In the interest of the whole country, we must have a power shift. That was the target. That was the most important thing. And the APC decided to do that, and they've come up with a southern candidate today. Now, the choices that southern candidate makes are the choices that he is comfortable with. Now, obviously, there are issues with that. Obviously, there are issues of, uh, with the same... Uh, a same, uh, same faith ticket. Obviously there are, and any Christian that will tell you that he's particularly happy with that, then seriously speaking, cannot be a real Christian. But as far as I'm concerned, this is an, it's not an issue of, uh, this is simply an issue of choice and political expediency. You are the, you are the one that's talking about how some elements in the country had wanted to Islamize the nation. That is precisely the point I is, was that's making. That's why I said, that's I mean, you point. are no, no, no. describing that the We spoke about fulanization. Yeah, you have, no, let me you, take you have said some of these things. Let me, things no, 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 let me take it step by step. Yeah. We spoke about fulanization. That has been thrown out of the window now because power has been shifted to the south by the APC, the party we accused of that. Secondly, we spoke about Islamization. Now, look at it again, and let's look at this closely. Since I joined the APC, I realized, like I said earlier, that things have completely changed. It's simply not like that. A situation whereby in this country today, we have 20, no less than, I believe it's 22. Um, I think I'm right in saying 22. Uh, Christian governors in this country. A situation whereby the whole of the Southwest has a Christian governor except for Oshun State, which has now changed, which has now changed because we have a Christian governor there as well now that's coming in. A situation like that tells you clearly that this country cannot be Islamized and neither is our party, the APC, interested in that. What is happening, really, as far as I'm concerned, is this, that we have reformed, we are moving forward, same faith ticket is something that was a challenge, but we looked into it. I prayed about it. I consulted. I spoke to Kashi because all along, my position has been it all depends on who the vice is. I said this on your program before the, con uh, before the co uh, convention, that if it came to that, it depends on who the number two is. It's not about his faith. It's about the individual. And if it is an individual that's a Muslim that right. I can live with, I'm prepared to live with that. So, and I did precisely that. I spoke with this man. I spoke with Tinubu. Let me just say this, because it's in, the point you raise is important, and it's a fair, fair question you ask. You talk about Islamization. The candidate himself returned schools to the missionaries in Lagos, something that had never been done before. The candidate gave land to so many of these mega churches in Lagos State when he was governor, and since that time they've been granted they've been granted um, uh, uh, licenses and uh, uh, land to you know to build churches. Go to the north. The, the, the vice, that is Shetima himself, the vice presidential candidate, I met him for over three hours we discussed. I looked into the man's eyes, I raised a number of pertinent questions which I needed to be satisfied. And I was satisfied with his answers. He has built more churches in Borno State than any other governor before him and since that time. Uh, and he has won the confidence Chief of many Christians. We need to close in just about So the issue of Islamization no longer arises. 30 or 40 seconds we need to close. And the first question, if you can do that in 15, 10 seconds, is the mission of Bola Tinobu to OBJ. What is that? Well, I think well, it's, it's very clear that, that he's consulting. He has gone to meet a man that many of us consider to be the father of the nation. He's gone to meet a Yoruba elder. He's gone to consolidate his base. He's gone to explain his mission to him. And I sincerely hope that our, fr our, pres our former president and our father will reciprocate this gesture by supporting him. We need a solid base in the Southwest right. for this coming election. And we need and to I close on this that. note. We need to close on this note. Is it ironic also, and how can Nigerians listen uh, to this kind of conversation, now, if you were that Abola Tinubu has said in the past, quote, Obasanjo is the greatest election rigger. His time has expired. Those are some of the words linked to Abola mm -hmm. but he's gone to meet that same person he described years ago. And, and, and President Obasanjo has said worse things about Abola Tinubu, both on, on the, on, in his books and also on television. We say these things sometimes. It does not mean we'll be enemies So Nigerians life. should not believe no, what politicians No, no, Niger say. Nigerians can believe what they like. The most important thing is that whatever anybody says at any given point in time, they reserve the right to retrace their steps and say something else based on conviction. And I don't think that, uh, uh, I don't think that, uh, that the gentleman that you're quoting there would say the same thing again, that Ashwaju would say the same thing again about President Obasanjo. Otherwise, All he right. wouldn't be where he is today. Chief Emi Fanika, the chairman of the APC, a former aviation minister. Thank you so much indeed for <laughs> coming tonight. Much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimbale. Bye for now.